All right, everybody, welcome. This is Art Jonak, as you can see on the screen here. And next to me, this way, is Mr. Wes Linden, all the way from England. I'm here in Texas. He's in England. We're using technology so that we can get you all this good information, 100% free, no charge, no opt-in. Just come on over and learn. And Wes, uh, we we're going to have a fireside chat today about raising retention. And uh, I'm really excited about this topic. Now, I wish I had technology like this when I started in direct selling and network marketing is what we called it back then, I suppose. Uh, <laughs> but if I had this, Wes, um, I think I would have been successful a whole lot faster if, and this is a big if, when I started in direct selling, I thought I had all the answers myself. <laughs> so I didn't need to listen to other people. And that was a big mistake for me. That cost me about five years of success. And so I want to applaud all of you who are here joining us live. Hopefully you've got pen and paper to take some notes because we're going to be crushing the content here. Um, let's talk about retention. The first thing I want to talk about is what exactly is retention? It's such a strange word, retain, like retaining water. You know, what do, if we're retaining water, we should eat watermelon because watermelon helps us purge the water. <laughs> I learned that when my wife was pregnant. You know, whenever she had, oh, well, you know, anyway, watermelon, good thing if you have retaining water. Uh, retention basically means it's the ability to keep your customers and your distributors on your team and active longer. So the higher your retention, the more people stay on your team. The more your customers stay, the longer they stay. So instead of staying for six months, maybe they stay for 12 months. Instead of staying for 12 months, they may stay for 24 months. Um, and that's the idea of retention. Now, while we're on definitions, what's the opposite of retention? And the opposite of retention is something called attrition. A-T-T-R-I-T-I-O-N, attrition. And attrition basically means is the pace, the speed at which people are leaving your team. How fast customers are quitting ordering within your organization. How quickly distributors are no longer participating in meetings and, and sponsoring people and getting customers showing up, reading the emails the company sends out. That's called attrition. And another word for attrition is something called churn. C-H-U-R-N, churn. So those are the three terms. Retention, good. Attrition, bad. Churn, bad. And just to set this up, Wes, because we're going to have a fireside chat more than, a, than an interview format. I guess we could kind of interview each other. Um, you know, Wes has an organization that does over $100 million a year in sales, and he's been doing this for how many years now? 17? Twenty. It'll be 20 in December. 20 years. So I would have to say that Wes probably knows a thing or two about retention and then probably a few things about what not to do to create attrition. Um, and so we wanted to discuss with you today what are some retention tools, things that we can do to help your retention rate, and then what are some retention killers, things that we may be doing that we may not even realize that could be killing the retention within your organization. And a simple explanation, just so you might think, well, what does this look like? If we focus our business primarily on recruiting, and recruiting, by the way, is not a, a great metric because recruiting can be great one month and it can be horrible the following month. You, you just don't know. Summer times, recruiting might go down, might go up. You might have a special in your company. You don't know. So if you base your business on a recruiting metric, and a metric is something that you um, use as a, a litmus, as a, as a basis, then your business could be very up and down because it follows the recruiting cycles inside your business. But if you base your business based on retention, then your business becomes very predictable. You can predict your volume from month to month to month if you focus on retention. And the mistake that I made when I first started in this business and direct selling, mostly because, you know, I hate to point blame, but one, I didn't listen. <laughs> And two, a lot of the people I was listening to, they were, they were focused so much on recruiting, right? Everything was about recruiting. Recruiting was the gateway skill to success in, in the business. And, and it took me about 10 years to find out that that was absolutely not true, right? Recruiting was very important, but it certainly wasn't the most important thing. And Wes, I'm going to turn it over to you to get some point, you know, some, your perspective on retention and attrition. But here's what I find. If those of you taking notes, there's recruiting, 
and there's retention. And we spend about 90% of our focus training and all that on recruiting and a whole lot less on retention. But the masters in this profession, when you look at the faculty of the mastermind event, for example, they're doing it completely in reverse. They're spending most of their time on retention and retention skills and a lot less time in recruiting because recruiting in its essence is very, very simple. Our business is good enough. Direct selling and network marketing is good enough. We can work at a flexible schedule. You can set your own time. You can make money immediately. You can create a passive income. You've got personal development. You've got associations. You've got good people. You don't need to hype that. When somebody hears that and they understand and the time is right for them, recruiting them, sponsoring them, that's easy. What you do with them afterwards, retention, that's what matters the most. Um, so mm -hmm. here's what happens. You recruit, 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 and if you don't have any retention, 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 there's this anchor of attrition, and when your recruiting numbers go down, that anchor sinks your volume. And I've experienced this many times before I understood retention, right, and how to work on it. So there's an anchor of attrition that's attached to your recruiting, and when your recruiting slows down, it sinks your business. But if you're working on attrition while there's retention going on, then you have a much better chance of continuing to build a large business. So Wes, let me turn it over to you and give us some of your thoughts initially before we go into specifics of how to increase retention and how to decrease attrition. Yeah, I mean, how many times have we heard um, big businesses or companies claiming, you know, outside of network marketing or direct selling, that uh, it's easier to keep a customer than to try and win a new one? And to me, that's always been the same thing in, in our businesses. I could never. What the, the biggest, biggest team in the whole, I have managed to do well over 20 years, is build a team of people that want to stay with us. Uh, and of course, recruitment's very, very important. There's no doubt about that, that recruitment is, is, is a real important part of our business. But I, I think sometimes I'll speak to, to, to leaders, um, whether it's in my own organization or business or, or outside of, uh, of my company, uh, and they'll say, you know, well, it's just not going so well. We just need to recruit. Uh, you know, if you, want more, um, if you want more productivity, you've got to get more producers and all that kind of stuff. And of course, that is, there is a truth to that. But the point I always say to them is, what are you going to do differently? What are you going to do differently with this lot of people to keep them versus the lot that you're now moaning about who aren't being create, uh, who aren't being productive? Uh, and I think that's really important. It's not just about recruit, recruit, recruit. It's about what are we going to do with them when we get them and how are we going to keep them so we don't have to keep repeating this process of desperate recruiting. Mm, I love that. I love that you turn it to the team member because – one of the things I've learned about good mentors, and I've got many great mentors in my life, the best mentors I have, they don't tell me what to think. They tell me what to think about so that I can come to my own yeah. conclusions. And I love how you turn that to your team member and ask them, so what are you going to do differently so you don't have to <clears throat> keep sponsoring more people as they come in, they drop out, they come in and drop out. You know, you might as well get a job or, or different kind of sales because you're not going to go get that you know, that income, that passive income that's so great about here in, in our profession. And so, you know, those of you watching us live right now, again, I, I would say take on that, that, that thought that we're here to tell you what to think about, but we're not going to be here to tell you what to think. We're not here to tell you exactly how to go build your business. We want you to come to those conclusions because your business is unique. It's different from ours. Uh, mine's different from Wes's. Wes's is different from mine right? Different countries, different organizations. There's a lot of nuances in there. So take these concepts, use them as a platform to build upon, and then build your own strategies.